Welcome back to Manga Mondays, the only manga review show filmed randomly around the clock. Today I'm going to be talking about Land of the Lustrous, which is a manga that I'm just going to go ahead and immediately recommend because the fucking artwork is just so goddamn cool in this thing. This is a manga... Here, look at this. Look at this fucking... This is like, like, this is like a monster that these these girls are fighting. This is like... This fucking artwork's insanity. Uh, it, it's just... This is like the most elegant looking... Like, everything about this is elegance. It's all about projecting the image of elegance. The character designs, the monsters that they fight, the characters look like, like this. They're all these, like, uh, insanely skinny, androgynous... I think they're all referred to as girls in this, but, like, I don't know if that's, if they're, maybe it doesn't. I don't even know. It's about a bunch of crystal gems, and hilariously, it uh, advertises itself as for fans of Steven Universe, even though the literally only similarity to Steven Universe is the fact that it's about a bunch of crystal gems, <laughs> and that, like, uh, it's potentially lesbian, that's about it. Um, or maybe not, because the, I don't know if the gems are supposed to be gendered in this, but any, anyway, um, the story of this manga is that it takes place in, like, a post-apocalyptic world where, like, thousands of years have passed, humans don't exist anymore, nor are they remembered. The only living creatures on Earth are these crystal gem beings. They're just, like, gems that are alive. They're immortal, they're uh, virtually indestructible insofar as they can be re-put together if they fall apart because they're just made of crystals. And um, they are sort of ranked on hardness, like each one has a different level of hardness which makes them better or worse at fighting. And there is some kind of species that lives on like the moon that sends down these weird fucking monsters that are trying to collect the crystal gems. Basically, they want them for their collections because the people who live on the moon just want to collect pretty things. So they're trying to capture these girls and add them to their collection. And the girls are fighting back with, like, swords and fucking crazy shit. Uh, or just, like, their their bodies. All kinds of stuff. This thing, like, the artwork in this is so, like, interpretive that sometimes I'm not entirely sure, like, what is literally happening. Which is funny because the actual story and dialogue is very straightforward. The main character is Phosphophyllite, and she is she is like the lowest hardness. She's shit at everything. Basically, every other crystal gem has some kind of job. Some of them are watchers, some of them are fighters, some of them are doctors or this and that. You know, they've all got jobs that are fairly militaristic. It's, it's you know, it's an action series. All the characters are action heroines. They're led by this um, monk dude who they call Sensei, and he basically is the leader of this, this troop. But, um... Foss doesn't have a job. She's tried to do every different thing that's available, and she sucks at all of it. So Sensei tells her to try to create a natural history of the world. That's the job he's giving her because it'll just keep her out of the way, essentially. And she doesn't want to do it, and basically this entire volume is Foss bitching about how much she doesn't want to do this job and everyone else shitting on her for being useless. I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty repetitive. Like... The dialogue is 100% either people shitting on foes or her complaining. And, like, she doesn't really progress at all as a character in this volume. It's mostly about her getting shit on. However, there's this one gem called Cinnabar who is sort of cursed in that, like, everything she touches dies or becomes useless, including gems. If she touches a gem, they have to scrape that part of uh, the gem off and it cannot be reattached. So Cinnabar, um, basically because no one wants to be around her, they've put her on night duty, and she nothing ever happens at night. The enemy never attacks at night, so she just wanders the nights alone, and it's just a lonely, broken girl. And when Foes tries to come to her to ask for information about the world, then uh, she realizes how lonely she is, and she's like, I promise I'm going to help you. Of course, Cinnabar doesn't believe her and is completely standoffish about it, and Foz is now like, how do I help this girl? So, like, obviously it's going to be about those two girls becoming friends, uh, you know, Foz trying to help Cinnabar. Um, there's definitely room for a big emotional arc here. Again, I think this volume is pretty fucking repetitive, and, like, I wasn't super engrossed in the story, but the fucking artwork is just so badass. Like, sometimes it takes a second to process. Sometimes I'm not entirely sure what's going on. 
But, like, just the world and characters. I, I don't even know what I want to show because I don't want to spoil too much. This is definitely... Look at this. Look at this shot. Just look at the composition of this. Of foes just staring into the water and this, this huge... It's just so fucking nice looking. And I'm willing to read more of it, like, for sure. Just so I can see more of this fucking dazzling artwork. Like... Again, it it's the epitome of elegance. It really reminds me of Five Star Stories, uh, if any of you have ever heard of that um, old mecha series, or like maybe a little bit of Yoshitaka Amano art. Like it's got that kind of that very wispy, thin, elegant feel. I keep saying elegant, but like that's the only word that sticks in my mind. Like the this is uh, if if the world of the Crystal Gems from Steven Universe consisted only of Pearl. That's what this manga would be. Like, this is, like, what I think Pearl thinks uh, gems are and what they're, <laughs> what they're supposed to be. Um, yeah, I mean, the manga is overall, in spite of the artwork being so gorgeous and everything, the story and dialogue is fairly goofy. Like, the characters aren't self-serious or anything, um, except for the ones who are, but, like, it kind of makes fun of them for being that way, like... Most of the dialogue is more on the funny, light-hearted side. So, you know, while it has moments where it can get a little bit more emotional, it's definitely not, like, a heavy gravity thing. Like, the artwork is way more obtuse than the actual story is, which I was, you know, worried almost going into this, that the story was going to be, like, not comprehensible. But, no, it's pretty straightforward. Just the art's crazy. And so, um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I had a good time. Like, just, just... What is happening? What is this? This is so fucking cool. So, yeah, I recommend Land of the Luminous, or Lustrous, Land of the Lustrous. If it seems like, if, if this art has entranced you, go check it out. Like, the art's that good the whole time. Um, and, you know, Foes is a relatable character. I think there's some people who will probably like this story more than I do. I only got sick of it because it's so repetitive and because... Um, you also, it's not the easiest to tell all the characters apart, at least for a long while. Like, you really gotta spend time with them before you can tell who's who, since they all look exactly the fucking same, aside from their hair. And, like, you know, in this color shot, it's, you know, they've all got different colored hair. That would make it easy, but when you're reading the damn thing, they've all just got different shades of gray... So it's not uh, not as easy. And a lot of them just kind of flitter through. Like, there's a ton of crystal gems. And only a few of them are, like, major characters. So it can be difficult to keep track of them all. But that aside, still good. Still recommend it. Still going to buy more for the art alone. See you next week!